Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I am one of the co-chairs of the newly diagnosed working group. Thank you if you have already watched our pre-tape session. We hope you found it interesting. If you haven't already watched it, uh, please look for it in our newly diagnosed section. As you heard throughout the video, the topic of stigma and shame around Parkinson's disease was a theme throughout the conversations our committee members had with organizations across the globe. And how this barrier, uh, how this is a barrier to reaching the newly diagnosed. While there are many reasons why the newly diagnosed do not uh, reach out, um, it seemed that this was a common thread. And so we've decided to address this issue with you today, the international community. Together, we can discuss the issue of stigma and shame and then invite our leaders to explore what can be done to address this. In discussing the newly diagnosed and the barriers to care with a focus on stigma, we would like your opinion. So as a starting point, we have a few poll questions for you regarding stigma and shame. So <clears throat> the first question is, is stigma and shame an issue in your country for people with Parkinson's? And the second question is to ask you to please rate the severity of the stigma in your country. We've um, got a scale of one to 10, with one being stigma and shame is little to no problem, and 10 being that it is a severe problem to the extent that people do not admit that they have Parkinson's disease. We need to wait for a little while for those poll results, and so I'm um, inviting. Uh, questions from you now or comments and to join us are the two primary interviewers uh, with the other countries, Shira Rosenfeld, the other co-chair of the newly diagnosed working group. Welcome Shira. And Francesco de Renzi's, one of uh, the other group members. Both of them did interviews with various countries and you can find the notes from their interviews um, under the resource section under our newly diagnosed um, uh, uh, area on the platform. Uh, Francesco, would you like to start? Just do a, a brief overview of uh, your interviews. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Jean, and thank you very much for to everybody for being here today. Um, so first of all, um, my, my interviews were run in Europe. Uh, I don't know how many Europeans we have here uh, listening today, but uh, I'm sure everybody will agree that uh, Europe cannot be considered as a, how can I say, as a monolithic block, right? Because we have uh, many, many different countries, and uh, each country is is different within uh, within itself. Um, we, as a European Parkinson's Disease Association, are very very aware of this and very aware that uh, there are um, economic and cultural factors and social factors impact impacting uh, the way. Uh, associations engage with newly diagnosed in, in each country differently. However, uh, throughout the throughout the interviews that uh, that I ran, um, the topic of stigma seemed to be kind of a common a common theme, and uh, and also uh, with uh, with the interviews ran in other parts of the world, actually also in countries very far away from Europe, and that where the social and economic context could be very different. Again, uh, we saw that the topic of, of stigma is very much a recurrent one. Uh, so um, th th this could be, uh, this is true also in Europe and uh, obviously is declinated in different ways, also within different countries and uh, even within different areas uh, inside a country. For example, the, the country where I come from, Italy, uh, there will surely be some uh, areas that are due to uh, several factors, uh, cultural, traditional, <laughs> uh, economic factors, where the stigma relating to um, a Parkinson's diagnosis could be uh, stronger than in others. Um, but uh, on an overall level, uh, we could uh, consider this one of the main barrier, barrier and topics that needs to be addressed if we want to meaningfully reach and engage newly diagnosed people together, of course, with uh, a general lack of resources that was reported by many organizations that I got in touch with, uh, especially small ones that, for whom, uh, as I said, the lack of resources, both in terms of money and manpower, uh, prevents to develop uh, or makes it more difficult to develop um, programs, especially targeted and newly diagnosed. Uh, but uh, yeah, for sure we can say that stigma is uh, 
the topic we want to talk, to talk about today. Thank you, Francesco. So uh, we'll move to you, Shira, if you would be uh, uh, so kind as to give a, a short uh, summary of your interviews as well, please. Sure. Good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm sure we're all still uh, getting our motors going a little bit. Um, uh, you know, I, I talked to some of our colleagues in both Taiwan and in Malaysia, and I would say, you know, echo some of the same comments that Francesco made and some of the the same things that he heard in terms of stigma. I think, you know, a few other points that I would um, just highlight, uh, you know, that really um, are, are really critical in thinking about how we um, move forward, what we develop. So culture, religion, um, languages, and again, in terms of speaking to our colleagues in Malaysia and Taiwan, I mean, these are factors that the number of, of languages that are spoken, um, the number of religions, how those factors influence, um, again, they're, they're willing to share um, uh, that they have the disease, um, the influence it has on where they seek care and from whom they seek care. Um, and again, the stigma issue and how, how prominent um, and how dominant it can be um, for people in those countries and their willingness or, or um, discomfort with sharing even with family and friends. And so I think that is an overlay to you know, some of the discussion and how we think about potential um, solutions and um, strategies to address some of these issues. Um, so I, at this, I see some of the poll results coming up. Maybe Jean, I'll turn it back to you and we can hear from, um, uh, hear from the audience. Okay, thanks very much, Shira. Uh, so <clears throat> the uh, first poll question was asking you if stigma and shame was an issue in your country for people with Parkinson's and overwhelmingly 88% of you said yes, yes it is. 7% were not sure and 5% said no. So um, <clears throat> internationally, we've, we've uh, chosen this as the, the main issue to discuss today in our breakout room. So, uh, not good to know that this is an issue, but good to know that uh, we can all work together on addressing it as a barrier. But this was the question we asked you using a scale of one to 10 uh, and uh, with 10 being very severe to the point that people will not admit they have the disease to uh, little or no problem. So we can still see um, with the blue highlighted bars there that that's uh, 36% that um, it, it's pretty severe, a uh, scale six to seven. And if we add in the other 18%, eight to 18, I'm doing my math here, 21. So that's like well over half of the um, uh, people with uh, Parkinson's across the, the globe. And if you add in 10, it's, it's getting up there. So we know that this is a, it's still a major problem across most of the world and uh, to be able to access those folks with newly diagnosed, particularly in terms of the education and support that uh, many of our societies uh, offer. Uh, if you don't know uh, who's got Parkinson's, then you really can't reach out. So uh, that is going to be the main uh, focus of our breakout sessions. Um, and we, I think in discussion, if you can't, we realize that it's, it's really crucial that this piece gets addressed in terms of people not only getting connected with us in terms of our societies, programs and services, support, but also in terms of ensuring that people with Parkinson's get access to care and the appropriate care. So we are um, now going to ask you to further share your thoughts in breakout groups. It will really inform the next steps of our work that we can do some more work over the next year and again engage with you in Barcelona 2022. These are the questions that we'll be asking you to address in your breakout group. We uh, would like your input around whether or not we should be looking at a global campaign to address stigma in Parkinson's disease. The second question, uh, if, if it was no, then what are some other options to a, a global campaign? Invite your ideas and brainstorming. Uh, and if yes, and uh, we know funding is always an issue, but try to put that to the side and think about what a global campaign might look like if we were to uh, develop one. And there are some sub questions there because obviously uh, things are very different culturally in different countries. So. 
uh, how would we ensure that we uh, have a campaign that is then culturally appropriate across the world? Um, and, and how would we go about deploying a campaign and addressing different barriers that might be found, might be encountered? And last, we hope, but uh, uh, would your organization be interested in taking part of an anti-stigma campaign uh, around Parkinson's? Uh, I will just uh, uh, maybe talk a little bit about the group that I was in for just a very, very few minutes. And I think the idea was that um, um, Parkinson's is now uh, very much a, a global pandemic. So we should be uh, addressing this with the World Health Organization and getting some assistance from that uh, perspective as well. Um, and another really interesting idea that uh, came up in the group that I visited briefly was engaging industry more in terms of helping with um, addressing stigma rather than sometimes uh, creating it. And uh, there was there apparently is an ad that's been uh, circulated in the U.S. and it uh, again shows that very. Uh, difficult uh, uh, image that you often see about the elderly person who is bent over, stooped and very trembling. And so perhaps if we can work with uh, pharma and help turn some of their funding around in terms of addressing the stigma issue, that might be really a, a wonderful way to do this. Uh, I think what we'll do though is we'll start with you, Jody. If you could just give a very brief summary of uh, what um, your discussion was in your breakout group, please. Um, thank you, Jean. So we had a great discussion in our group um, and absolutely everyone agrees that this is an issue that needs to be addressed. And uh, some of the ways that we talked about it, it really revolves around education. And there is a theory that this is an older person's disease. Um, a lot of the conversation was around a very simple ad campaign, maybe a testimonial type campaign that could easily be looked at on a global scale and translated into different languages that would show exactly what it is that Parkinson's is and the different types of it. Um, one of the ads that was brought up was of an older gentleman holding a younger woman's hand and crying. And of course your heart goes out to the older gentleman thinking that he has Parkinson's. It's actually the younger woman who has Parkinson's. So really changing that stigma around what the disease is and what it means. Um, and then also looking at how do we tailor it specifically to different countries? There are some countries that really don't understand what Parkinson's is at all. They don't believe it exists. So how do we, have a, a campaign that would be multi-level that could be very simple for some countries, middle of the road for others, and then a little more higher end um, for countries that might have a better understanding of what Parkinson's is. So a really good discussion around a modular approach using ad campaigns, testimonials, very simple graphics that can be translated globally. Very innovative approach. Uh, Terrific, really uh, creative, where we're hoping to go with, with uh, some of this discussion and input from others today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Francesco, uh, could we ask you to give a brief summary of the, the group you were in? Yeah, I was I was actually in the in the same group as, as Jody oh. as we were okay. grouped, grouped together. But I think um, what one of the main take homes was also the need to diversify the message, obviously. And uh, as Jody was saying, to use a multi-channel approach, but also um, choosing the right audience or audiences. And uh, obviously, what I think we all know, the role of healthcare professionals in, in being on the front line, especially in certain contexts, uh, in engaging uh, the people at the time of the diagnosis as, and referring them back to support services. But also, it was mentioned how the role of the um, word of mouth and the, how can I say, the peer group, uh, uh, leveraging the peer group uh, uh, in uh, certain communities, but I, I would say in, in most communities, uh, regardless of, uh, of the country or, or ethnicity, I think that that could be one, at least one of the, um, of the roads to, to go through to, um, to reach out to people that uh, would otherwise be missed out. Great. Thank you, Francesco. I'm going to go on, though. I know, Holly, you had some difficulty uh, getting into your group. So are you okay if we uh, pass you by? 
And uh, Catherine, uh, we didn't see you earlier on. Uh, were you actually able to facilitate a group? Yay! Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, but my, my challenge has continued, Jean, because we got started and then we all got kicked out and then we all rejoined. So our group were definitely gold stars for flexibility. But we, um, we had a good conversation, I think, really aligning with the feedback from Jodie and Francesco. We had a broader conversation around what stigma means in different cultures, and even the use of the word stigma itself, we might need to really think about that. Um, and we, so we, we pulled out that conversation in the sense of that cultural sensitivity and pulled it out into the dynamic of working with different audiences. So really thinking about a campaign to really promote awareness and education for people and families who may be about to have a diagnosis of Parkinson's or in that newly diagnosed stage and thinking about how we can align around that. Um, so that was a really rich source of discussion and some great feedback there from, from colleagues around the world. The second topic we touched on, we didn't have time to get into the discussion, was thinking about the practicalities of this and making sure that we really are aligning globally. And we're going to specifically call out PD Avengers because we know that this is a work stream that's coming through in that forum as well. So it'd be really great for us to connect with the Avengers after, after these, the forum discussion and make sure that we're pooling our resources together. Um, as best as we can. But yeah, I think a unanimous vote in favour of, of a campaign to tackle stigma and what Eros described really powerfully as self-shame of having Parkinson's. So yeah, so that's a brief synopsis for you. Thanks, Jean. All right. Thanks very much, Catherine. Glad you're able to join us. Uh, I'm, I'm just seeing that there, there have been a few comments put on um, that the stigma begins with the name, Parkinson's disease. And the world, word disease implies that Parkinson's is contagious. And so um, perhaps even how we talk about it is something that uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, look at. Is that um, anything that uh, any of the groups, uh, any of the facilitators would like to comment on? We didn't talk about the, the naming of the disease as much as we did that, that kind of self-shaming and how do we how do we focus and, and possibly bringing in people who already have Parkinson's to help alleviate some of that self-shame and what the disease really is? So I, I think utilizing people who already have Parkinson's is a great way to, to address some of that. We had some really powerful commentary in our group about use of the word disease and how people were really vehemently opposed to that word being used. Mm -hmm. um, someone talked about referring to it as a Parkinson's transition. And to build on the point um, around that point around self seem and somebody else said, you know, when you're talking about education and awareness, perhaps the question to ask of yourself, what did I wish I knew at the point of diagnosis? I suppose reframe that as what would I have told my younger self mm. now? And if we can think about that and sharing those messages. We had a comment that um, uh, could PD organizations around the world lead by example and each employ at least one person with Parkinson's in their organization. So that's that's it, an interesting an interesting comment and thought. So I'm going to actually move to my, my closing summary. Thank you all for uh, participating and the facilitators for reporting back. Um, we really hope that you are interested in joining a campaign and please do connect with us uh, through WPC. Uh, you're welcome to connect with me as the one of the co-chairs of the working group at uh, Parkinson Society, British Columbia. If you just Google that, you can find my email, jblake at parkinson.bc.ca. We would like to have you continue the conversation. This is some wonderful ideas about how we can take this forward. And we are looking for more committee members work for our working group so that we can take forward some of this over the next year. And um, again, connect with you in Barcelona 2022. So please do um, uh, take us up on these three bullet points and um, uh, join us in doing this um, very impactful work. Thank you again. See you soon. Bye-bye.